Matt Birchler is a pal of mine and a fellow iPad person. He fairly recently launched a new YouTube channel and we decided to do a collab because, well, we both recently picked up M1 Max. Now, we're both iPad people and we're using those Macs in different ways. So we wanted to do a collab talking about how those Macs work in, well, our workflows. So I'm gonna play his video in just a second, but if you wanna see mine, you can go check it out on his channel. I'll put a link to his channel and that video in the description below. Hi everybody, my name is Matt, and I am a designer by day and a YouTuber by night, and my YouTube channel is called A Better Computer. It is a channel where I try to take the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years, uh, my many years of using computers, and try to show you how to use your devices better. So whether it's a computer in your pocket, on your lap, or on your desk, I wanna help you get the most out of it. Like I said, I'm a designer by trade, and that means I can't help myself. I like to make mock-ups for what future versions of Apple software could look like. If you wanna see what I hope watchOS 8 looks like this fall, uh, I have a video for that. If you want to see what widgets should look like on the iPad home screen, I've got a video for that as well uh, and a few others. But yeah, check those out if you're at all interested. So I wanted to thank Chris for having me on today to do a video on his channel. Uh, Chris and I agree on a lot of things. And honestly, his channel is a huge inspiration for getting me going on YouTube. Uh, so this is actually fantastic. But Chris and I get along really well, I think in large part because we agree on a lot of things, uh, especially when it comes to technology. And so just like Chris, I am primarily an iPad Pro user. I use a 12.9 inch 2018 iPad Pro uh, as my daily driver, I guess you would say. And I love the device. I think iPad OS is great. I think it has wonderful qualities about it. It's a joy to use. It's my favorite computer to use in general. And whether you're a novice user who doesn't want a complicated computer that's gonna get in your way and is going to get viruses and all this messy stuff that happens with traditional PCs, or if you're someone like us who is more advanced and has been using computers for a long time, and it's not that we don't know how to use a Mac or a Windows computer, it's a there are things we don't like about them and that the iPad does better. And so we definitely agree on that. What's interesting is that at the start of 2021, both of us, iPad first people, bought M1 Max. So why did we do that? Uh, Chris is doing a video on my channel explaining how he's using his Mac mini to I'll slot into his workflow and be really efficient for him. And I wanted to show you why I thought a MacBook Air was the right computer to introduce to my iPad first workflow. Uh, my MacBook Air is mostly a desktop computer, but let me show you why I thought I had to get one. And so why did I get a Mac? I got a Mac for this, uh, for YouTube. <laughs> for me, uh, doing YouTube videos on an iPad is just, it's more friction than I wish it was for the way I work. I know Chris would disagree with me. Chris he does all of his video stuff on the iPad and he does a great job. He does better work than I do, frankly. Uh, but he is, uh, he's able to make his workflow work there. I haven't been able to get there yet. Uh, there's still stuff on the Mac that I rely on and I prefer just in general. And for me, it's all about speed. Uh, how quickly can I get this stuff done? And as someone who has a day job, uh, who has like eight hours a day that I have to spend on that, uh, I'm doing these videos before work. If I don't get them done before work, I have to do them after work and they eat into my free time. Uh, and so it's really essential for me to do things fast and to use tools that I'm familiar with and I don't have to learn new things um, all the time. And so let's take a look at my Mac and see kind of what I'm working with, uh, how I've custom tailored this Mac to be as efficient as possible for me. And as you can see right from the start, when we look at the dock, this computer is all about videos. <laughs> this is about video production. And the heart of the operation for me is an app called ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow is a screen recording app. It's really built for people who wanna record their screen, record screencasts, narrate them, uh, show clicks on screen, show um, like their keystrokes on screen, do some animation stuff. But I find it actually to be a really great general purpose video editor. I know it's not gonna work quite for everybody, but for the stuff that I do, it's amazing. Uh, the way that it handles animations, I made a whole video about how animations work in ScreenFlow and how it's incredibly fast, incredibly efficient, and lets me do things I would not be able to do nearly as fast in other apps. It's really remarkable, and so I love it. Um, ScreenFlow is the heart, like I said, of this operation. I do most of my videos in ScreenFlow. Even if I don't record a second of my screen, oftentimes I'm editing in ScreenFlow just because it's so fast, so efficient, and lets me do animations so easily. Then there's Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro is the other app that I use. I actually don't use this as much just because ScreenFlow is so good, uh, but Final Cut Pro is the video editor app that I'm generally most comfortable in. I've been using it for <laughs> decades at this point. I learned video editing in Final Cut Pro, uh, Final Cut Pro 4 or 5 or something. It was a long, long time ago, uh, but it's gone through many changes since then, but still I really love how the app works. I think it's fast, I think it's effective, and it just works with how my brain thinks about editing, so I really like it. 
Then there's Notion, uh, and then Notion is what I use to track my projects it, for this channel. And so I have basically a Kanban board set up where I have like my ideas in a backlog. I have the ones I'm currently working on. I have my ones that I've already completed. And I'm able to, using Notion, uh, really customize this to work how I want. So I can show exactly what I want on the main board. I can organize the fields how I'd like them to be. I can set custom data types and stuff. And so I can go through here and I can see a calendar when my videos were released. I can see what's coming up. I can see the video number. I can see a link to it. I can see the thumbnail that I uploaded. And then there's all sorts of information I can just recall very quickly uh, without having to like log into YouTube Studio or anything like that. I just have my own version of that data. Notion is of course also available on the iPad, but I think their, their iPad experience is not very good. Uh, and while Notion is very powerful and lets you really customize and create kind of the interface that you want for yourself, I think that it really is an app still best run on a desktop computer. I just think that's what it's meant to be worked with and their iOS apps and iPad apps just don't feel quite as good. So I tend to use it on the Mac. And especially since I'm doing the video work here anyway, it just makes sense for me to just kind of uh, add the thumbnail, add the descriptions, put the links to the YouTube video and stuff there while I'm doing it on the Mac. There's some other stuff here. Um, a lot of times for these videos, I'll like show a clip from an Apple video or something from YouTube. And so I use YouTube DL to download that video real quick uh, and get it into my project. Uh, appropriately credited, of course, but uh, basically I can do this on the iPad. You can install a terminal uh, app on the iPad, install YouTube DL and use it there. But in my experience, it's super slow, even if your internet's super fast. Uh, the iPad, for whatever reason, these terminal apps, they just are much slower than it is on the Mac. Uh, so it's much quicker for me to get these videos on the Mac. And then there's file storage. The file storage story on the iPad has definitely gotten better over the years and their support for external keyboards in the past couple years has really helped that. Uh, but still, it's not quite as fast. It's not quite is good, it's not quite as reliable. I get some weird bugs when I'm trying to move especially really big files around where they just don't transfer for some reason or my iPad says it's full even though there's clearly tons of space available for it. It's just not the best and so moving these large files around, these large video files especially, um, around through the Mac, through an external drive, through an SSD like and everything um, is much easier on the Mac and is much more reliable, which again, when I'm working fast and I really just need things to work so I can get things done, um, is really important to me. And then there's this, there's the external monitor, uh, which is really important for me. It's really important for me to be able to uh, have my video editor on a big screen. Uh, the iPad can do that, and LumaFusion I know has a slightly custom UI that it shows uh, when you plug into an external monitor, but it's not the same as having the full control of the Mac, of having these apps that are designed from the ground up to run on really big screens. Um, it's just a better experience for me to do this editing on the biggest screen possible, um, and the iPad just doesn't do that quite as well today. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at how I use an M1 Mac to complement my iPad first workflow. Again, I want to thank Chris for having me on the channel, giving me this opportunity to talk to you guys. Uh, and if you enjoyed anything about today's video, I'd love it if you dropped a like below and check out my channel. Again, it's called A Better Computer and it has, has a lot of content there already. If you enjoy this, uh, you'll definitely enjoy that. And yeah, I hope to see you over there. So thank you again for watching and I hope to see you again later.